So let's talk about oncogenes, right? Oncogenes are derived from proto-oncogenes. And proto-oncogenes, we all have these sorts of things. So these genes have normal function. However, once exposed to UV radiation, smoking, and things of that sort, environmental things, unfortunately, they can become mutated, right? These proto-oncogenes become mutated. Once they're mutated, we no longer say they're proto-oncogenes. We now talk about oncogenes. And so these are where the genes are excessively uh, producing um, excessive um, active product, which then can lead to unregulated cell growth. So this promotes cell growth and, and proliferation. And uh, it is activated by gain of function mutation, gene amplification, and hypomethylization. And this is commonly found in sporadic tumors. So remember with tumor suppressor genes, these genes that suppress tumors, these exhibit germline mutations once mutated, and these cause inherited cancer. However, germline mutations is not common when we're talking about uh, oncogenes, right? These are, on the other hand, found in sporadic tumors, okay? And here I'll give you guys a little example of this. So cells, all cells contain DNA, right? Most cells contain DNA, especially in the human body, right? And these, if they contain DNA, they also contain a specific gene called the RAS gene, right? And this is very, very important because from the RAS gene, we can make the RAS protein. And so let's look at that. Well, if you have growth factors, right? So for example, steroid hormones, it could be estrogen, testosterone, cortisol, something like that. This can bind to growth factor receptor. Once it's bound to the, once the growth factor binds to the growth factor receptor placed on the cell membrane, well then the receptor gets activated. And this will actually activate the RAS protein. Okay? So in normal cells, the RAS protein cycles between the active form, so this is bound to GTP, right, or uh, guanosine triphosphate, and it will also cycle between that and then the inactive form, which is D or guanosine diphosphate. So in normal cells, it, it, uh, the RAS protein cycles between these two. However, once the growth factor binds to the growth factor receptor and it gets activated, then the uh, RAS protein gets activated, right? So here it's inactive, now it will get activated, right? And once activated, um, it will induce phosphorylation, right, of lo loads of proteins, which then will activate transcription factor, which then would read genes to make proteins, and these proteins we are making are called cyclins and CDKs. And remember, cyclins and CDKs together drive the cell through the cell cycle, okay? So, suppose that we get a mutation of the RAS protein. What will happen if a mutation happens on the RAS protein? Well, we will be overproducing protein for cell growth. And so we will have proliferation. And the reason for that is that if we make a mutation of the RAS protein, the inactive RAS protein is no longer part of the equation, right? We will uh, only have active RAS protein now. It will be in this phase for a very long time. And this will of signal that now we need to make proteins and we'll make these cyclins and CDKs, which will keep on promoting cell growth and proliferation, right? So we will actually make cancer cells if we get a mutation on the RAS protein, right? And so a mutated RAS protein actually acts as an on oncogene, right? Because what did we say an oncogene was? It's a pro... Uh, um, proto-oncogene which is mutated, right? And these oncogenes promote cell growth and proliferation. And this is the exact same thing that is happening here, right? Promoting uncontrolled cell growth. So this is actually an, an example of an oncogene, right? So the mutation of the RAS protein will make these cyclones and CDKs 
con con making sure the cell continues in this um, cell cycle, inducing proliferation. And uh, this is um, an example of an oncogene. Okay.